everyone, my name is Megan, and today I'm going to be starting my first kind of podcast episode. So with this podcast, I'm hoping to explore the supernatural, and I hope that some people will kind of join me on this journey and be open to sharing some of their own paranormal stories and points of view. This is something that I've been kind of thinking about trying for a while, but I wasn't sure how exactly to start or how to go about doing it. Um, But now seemed like a good time to start, especially with Halloween coming up next month. So um, something that also kind of drove me to begin this journey was I was shopping at Value Village one day and uh, came across a book that said ghosts just written on the cover. And uh, actually, I can grab that. So the title of the book is Ghosts, True Encounters with the World Beyond, Haunted Places, Haunted Houses, Haunted People. (laughs) And that is written by Hans Holzer. Uh, So far I haven't gotten completely through. It's a humongous book, but there's lots of really good content in it. And uh, I definitely think it's not a coincidence that I found it when I was shopping that day. So each week, I hope to release a new podcast episode that features some different topics of discussion about the paranormal, and uh, I would also like to feature uh, some of your guys' ghost stories, um, just to anyone who might be willing to willing and open to share them with me. I've never done anything like this before, as I said, but I've definitely always enjoyed a good spooky story, and I've always been really interested in watching different paranormal investigation shows. I used to really enjoy watching shows like Paranormal Witness that was on the Space Channel, and uh, also Dead Files was another favorite of mine. I very much enjoyed that show. So uh, one of my main areas of interest are um, stories about spirits and ghosts, but I'm definitely open to hearing other forms of stories. I will say, though, that I'm terrified of aliens so if anyone shares a story about aliens with me that they might like for me to feature on this podcast maybe just give me a heads up (laughs) so just kind of to start off um, when I was reading through another book that I have that's actually all about different celebrity ghosts and uh, came across something that I thought was really interesting It was talking about kind of where the origin of the word ghost comes from, and that's not really something I ever considered before. But uh, in this particular book, they said that the origin of the word actually comes from the old English term that means ghast. And they said that uh, the original kind of meaning of the word ghost had a lot of kind of negative meanings associated with it. So, uh, ghast meant anger, fury, and rage. So, uh, I just kind of found that was interesting that kind of, you know, early on, ghosts were always had, you know, kind of associated with something negative or something to be feared. Um, And, you know, personally, I I believe that uh, there can definitely be positive experiences that you can have with spirits or different supernatural beings as well. So, um, kind of talking along the discussion of the supernatural and possibility of there being an afterlife, it kind of brought me back to something that uh, I have learned in a death and dying class that I had taken at St. Thomas University. This is something that always kind of stuck with me, and I just thought it was really interesting, so I wanted to share it with you. But um, we had read in a textbook, I think at one point, that... um, You know, back in the day, people actually spent more money on funerals than they did on weddings. When I first read that, I was really surprised, but um, possibly back in the 1800s or 1900s, that was not an unusual thing. They kind of maybe saw it as more of like celebrating a person's life rather than in a negative sense. And also, you know, kind of looking at topics of the supernatural and paranormal, 
I think probably now, almost more than ever, there's more people that are more open to learning about things that are paranormal or supernatural in nature. And there's so much interest, you know, people joining groups that do paranormal investigations. Uh, I know even if you go shopping at the mall, if you go to Spencer's, you could buy a Ouija board. So it's kind of something that's becoming a more and more common thing to talk about or, you know, people are more open to those kinds of ideas. So that's something I wanted to kind of mention as well and something I thought was interesting when I was thinking about what to talk about today. Yeah, so kind of just to uh, put into perspective, you know, like, I discussed a little bit like where my interest in ghost stories and ghosts kind of originated from, but I figured that I would share with you guys a couple of my favorite ghost stories or ones that I've always really enjoyed. Um, maybe these are some stories that you guys would already be familiar with, but I personally found them really cool. And I always like to share them with people if we're ever talking about ghost stories. So the first one, um, I would have heard this, oh goodness, probably, I think I was in elementary school at the time. And uh, I'm originally from St. John. So there was a local author that had come to our school. And I'm assuming it must have been in the fall, probably around Halloween, because one of the topics that he was talking about was spooky stories. And there's definitely some pretty cool scary stories or kind of ghost stories that have come from St. John. Definitely some cool ones around New Brunswick, but this was the one that always stuck with me and it was probably almost 15 years ago that I heard this story. So um, what he had said was that, you know, back in the day there was a fisherman and he must have gone out on the, on the sea <laughs> and he didn't return home. Something happened and he was killed while he was out on the water. But what his family reported was that every day, even after he had died, they were opening their door and there was a fish that was sitting outside of their door. So they could only assume that his spirit was coming back and continuing to bring them fish even after he had died. So I thought that that was really cool. I'm not sure what you guys might think, but I, that one always kind of stuck with me. And it kind of has a really kind of cool connection for me because I grew up not very far from the St. John City Market. And a lot of people have reported seeing the spirit of this man, this fisherman, walking through the city market carrying a large fish. So they say when he's seen, he's usually wearing kind of like the yellow fisherman's outfit, the yellow fisherman hat. And I thought that was just the coolest. I can remember when I was younger, walking through the city market and by the fish markets and wondering like, oh, am I going to see the fisherman today? Like, am I going to see his ghost? I never did see him. And it's probably not a bad thing because I'd probably be terrified if I did. <laughs> but still something cool and I don't know if anybody listening has maybe seen this apparition or thinks that it could be true. Maybe you can let me know. Let's see, um, another one that I, another story that I always really liked was um, a story that comes from, I guess, St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And um, it takes place at the Algonquin Hotel. So I actually just heard this story, probably would have been about a year ago. Um, I had stayed at the hotel for a night. It was the first time I'd ever stayed there and it was amazing. I was always really interested in trying to stay there for a night because I heard of just all kind of the spooky stories that surround that place. Um, I had always heard people say that Stephen King had, had some of his inspiration for writing The Shining had come from staying at the Algonquin Hotel for a while. So that definitely had drawn me to wanting to stay there and kind of get a feel for the place. And not only that, but see what it looked like on the inside. I just always heard it was really cool. And I also heard that they offered a haunted tour of the hotel. So at the time I was there, I was not able to do the haunted tour. Um, just due to some of their COVID restrictions and things like that, it wasn't something they were doing. 
But um, we were able to talk to one of the staff members while staying there, and he was really awesome. He took some time to kind of talk with us about just a couple of ghost stories. And uh, the coolest one I think that he told us about was um, what they call the, the story of the bellman or the bellboy. So what he explained was that people going to the Algonquin Hotel, they sometimes get into the elevator and there's a man in there, the bellman, and he's always very helpful. He tells them different facts about St. Andrews, about New Brunswick, and he tells them about the Algonquin Hotel, recommends some different things for them to do while they're staying there. And in fact, he's so pleasant that when the people in the elevator, the tourists, come down to the main lobby, they, they insist on tipping this man because he was just so helpful. Come to find out, the Algonquin Hotel does not have a bellman. So what the staff believe is that the person they are seeing in the elevator is actually a spirit of someone who's passed away, but uh, is obviously very helpful because everyone wants to give them tips. <laughs> so I thought that one was very, very cool. Um, I think that they did also mention that this particular ghost at the hotel, it's not somebody that they see all the time. I think that he only has been reported seen there during certain times of the year. And I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe they said it was in the winter months that visitors say that they see the bellman in the elevator. So yeah, I don't know what you might make of that. I thought it was cool. Um, when I stayed there, I believe it was in May. So uh, the bellman... I don't think he was there, but I definitely didn't see him in the elevator. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool sometimes. Like, uh, you never know when you might get onto the topic of talking about a spooky story or, you know, scary ghosts and stuff like that. But uh, going to the Algonquin Hotel was definitely very, a cool experience. Um, nothing, I, I wouldn't say personally that anything supernatural happened to me while I was there, but um, definitely a cool experience to say that you've stayed in a hotel that people report to be super haunted. So if anybody has ever stayed at the Algonquin Hotel and has had like a cool experience there or maybe experienced something, uh, that would be really cool if you could maybe let me know more about that. I'd love to hear about that. So um, aside from kind of having an interest in paranormal shows and, you know, scary movies and all that stuff, um, another thing that kind of gave me more of an interest in the paranormal was an experience that I had when I was probably about eight or nine years old. And it's something that has stuck with me for many years, something that I always remembered. Um, yeah, I was probably about eight or nine years old at the time, and I remember I was sitting in my bedroom, sitting on my bed, listening to some music, and the, the farthest thing from my mind was thinking about ghosts or anything like that. And I can just recall kind of sitting on my bed, being very relaxed, and just listening to that music, and all of a sudden, it was like I felt an arm touch my, or hand, sorry, touch my shoulder. And that was something that had never, ever happened to me before. So, of course, when you feel something like that, you know, I turned around to see if maybe my mom was there or, you know, maybe my dad was there trying to get my attention. But when I, I looked to turn, yeah, there was uh, nobody was there. So and that was something it just felt so real that I just I can't explain what happened there. So that was the first time that it happened. I was eight or nine years old. Um, that was when I was living in St. John at an apartment on Leinster Street. So we definitely had some kind of different weird supernatural stuff that happened there. Um, my mom definitely has some kind of funky stories of stuff that happened while we lived there. Um, probably we lived there for about upwards of 10 or 11 years and uh, you know, on an almost daily basis, we would hear like footsteps upstairs when we would be downstairs in the living room. 
Um, I mean, it was an old building, so not to say it couldn't have just been the building shifting or, you know, we had the older hardwood floors in the apartment, so it could have just been the floors creaking or settling, but I don't know. (laughs) Um, Definitely some weird stuff. Definitely feeling like kind of unsettled there. But uh, my own experience of having what felt like someone touched me on the shoulder, that wasn't, um, I don't really think of that as like a negative experience. Like in that moment, I didn't feel afraid. Um, I felt pretty peaceful. I felt pretty peaceful. You know, I'm not sure like if it had been a spirit, who it could be. But um, yeah, yeah, always something. And I still think about that a lot. Um, If any of you guys have some ideas of what that could be or you know I'm definitely open to hearing that so just going forward a little bit um, I was graduating high school that was in 2016 and I was still living in St. John at the time we had our graduation ceremony at the Imperial Theatre and um, I remember, you know, like it was an exciting day. I had all of my family around me at the time. And, you know, as as many of you guys probably know, you feel pretty proud on your graduation day. So all of the graduating class, we were sitting together on stage at the Imperial Theater. And I was really anxious to get my diploma. Like the day was finally there and I was so happy. And I just remember kind of looking out over the audience and seeing, being able to kind of point out where my family was sitting in the crowd of people. And um, again, I felt the same hand on my shoulder, just the same as it had happened almost 10 years before. And again, it just felt like a a very positive feeling. It didn't feel negative. Um, When it happened at first, I I couldn't figure out what was going on because I thought like, you know, did somebody actually touch me on the shoulder, like turned around to see if the people behind me were trying to get my attention, my fellow classmates, but everyone was kind of focused on what was coming next and getting ready to go up and get their diploma. So yeah, that was kind of another experience that I had and it was really strange for me because it was like the exact same thing that happened to me when I was eight or nine years old and here it was happening to me again on uh, my graduation day. So um, yeah, I don't know. I I do have a couple of ideas of who I think it possibly could be. Um, I'm thankful to say that I I haven't lost, you know, um, very many family members. very thankful to say that but um i sometimes wonder if it could possibly be possibly be my great grandmother um but yeah i really i'm not 100 percent sure what was going on there and it hasn't happened to me again since so that would have happened probably about four or five years ago now so yeah i don't know again um You know, people talk sometimes or have negative ideas about spirits or ghosts and they think, you know, it's always a negative thing or something that you should be afraid of or that it's dangerous. But uh, fortunately, you know, the couple of experiences I did have were the positive kind. So, yeah, I don't know. If anyone has thoughts on that, I'm definitely very open to hearing more about that. Um... Again, for me, kind of just doing this podcast is just about learning more, um, kind of talking about some different topics, a um, couple of definitely things I'm interested in or just uh, spirits, um, kind of learning more about that area, even learning about um, near-death experiences as well would be very interesting to talk about at some point. Um If you guys have any book recommendations or documentary recommendations for me about the supernatural, I would definitely be open to checking that out because uh, just really wanting to learn more about this topic and kind of go from there. Um, Still kind of figuring out this whole podcast thing. I would really like to set up a way for people to send me some of their, their own stories or some of their own thoughts on some of these things. So I don't know if maybe the best way to go about that, I might set up an email and that way you guys can get a hold of me there. 
and kind of send me some stuff if you'd like. Um, I know for sure coming into this, <laughs> it might sound ridiculous, but, you know, people say, or at least I've heard them say that when you're kind of open to this stuff and like talking about supernatural stuff or paranormal stuff, like, does it open you up more to like being contacted by different things or different spirits? Uh, I honestly don't have an answer to that. Definitely a concern, but I guess I'll just kind of take it in stride and go from there. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be friendly, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Just kind of on a final note, um, I just wanted to also kind of mention one of my other inspirations for starting up this podcast. So recently I kind of discovered on Spotify this ghost story podcast just called Real Life Ghost Stories. Um, they kind of feature like some different stories from listeners, different experiences they've had, and they also kind of, I think that they also review some different films on the topic of ghosts and the supernatural. So if that's something that you'd like to check out, I definitely highly recommend them. They are great. And I usually like to sit and listen to their stuff if I have a cup of coffee. So yeah, I guess on that note, I'll kind of end it there for today. And if you guys have any feedback or any suggestions, definitely let me know. I'm definitely open to that. Okay, bye.